Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome to my channel, Hazel and Atta Design. Um, I am so glad you're here, but I also feel like I need to warn you that I feel a chat coming on. So, you're thinking to yourself, okay, so what's new about that? Um, I will warn you that um, I got some stuff to say. But the real purpose of the video is to admire the loveliness, the beauty, the possibilities in Victoria magazines. Now, um, and that's, that's what we'll be doing. Plus, I'll pick one to harvest from because I'm convinced that they will be a source of um, materials that obviously many of us would be inclined to use in our projects. Now, I'm going to say something revolutionary here. So if I get struck down by the publishing gods, the video will end abruptly. I am going to say that to my taste, I believe that these magazines are even more beautiful, more desirable, more versatile than the beloved Ideals magazines. Oh, no clap of thunder or lightning bolt. That's good. And because we live in a free world, <coughs> we get to enjoy both, the best of both worlds. So, um, but before we get to that, let me just make, say a few things, bring up to speed. Um, on the, okay, today I'm taping this on Monday, November 18th. And, uh, so yesterday I began packing up Christmas and, um, haven't totally moved it, you know, downstairs and into the totes where that belongs. And I also began, um, packing up all the supplies <clears throat> that I have been using for the blush journals that I've been making over the last many months. And so I was, you know, I just did that and while I was watching a couple of movies. Uh, not totally finished, not remotely finished, but it's happening. And I have to say, it feels, it feels good to be putting things back where they belong. I excavated the surface of my desk. I did have to bring in heavy equipment, but you know, you do what you have to do. And now I have a little room to spread out in either direction, which is good. And I'm really looking forward to being able to either start something brand new or maybe do a combination of finishing things that I've started in the past. And I think we're all plagued by that to some degree. Maybe I'll change the view here for you. This is a February 1996 issue. <coughs> so, I don't know about you, but I'm famous for, you know, do something, especially if it's, you know, for the purposes of a video. Make, 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 or start, 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 start. Put it in a little basket, put it in a bag, put it in a little something, a temporary holding space, and then pro promptly... Um, forgetting about it, losing it, covering it up with whatever comes after that. So I have created off to my side here, a couple of clear bins with the big label on it, finish these. And um, as, as people have been uh, reacting, to, oh, and that's another thing I should remind you. If you're a subscriber, you do want to seek out that video that I did last week. Uh, I think it's called Announcement for Subscribers. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Um, many of you responded by saying that you like the Get Her Done series, the, the playlist that I began. And I think that for my own... <clears throat> Um, mental health that I need to incorporate that on in a more regular basis. Um, 
So I have, and I, oh, trust me, I have half a dozen, and hey, that could maybe be a subject of video. Going through, item by item, little boxes and um, piles and bins full of stuff that, again, were just placed there temporarily. So there's that. <clears throat> I, um... As I was going to bed last night, I had this sick feeling that, uh oh, do I have a video done and scheduled for today, Monday, November 18th, I guess. And um, I was relieved this morning to find out, yes, that I did have one. And it, it, I, it was done so long ago. It was done when Carol, uh, in summer, when Carol was doing, Carol, Crinkled Path Carol, was doing the Christmas in July thing. So, Lord only knows what I said or did in that video. It was so long ago. But it reminded me that I need to buckle down and get some more videos done and scheduled because that really does provide peace of mind and give me some flexibility in my day-to-day -day life, knowing that you guys are looked after because there are videos scheduled. Um, okay, getting close to the end of all this preamble. Um, the last, well, not, <laughs> hardly the last thing I want to say. Um, I, um, over the week, well, I guess on Sunday, I had a couple of flip through videos. So those of you who have been around for a while and know that I've been working on those blush journals for a long time, uh, you voted saying that you wanted it to be a start to finish thing well, and morphed into four journals and so on and so on and so on. Um, you've heard all the stories. Um, I finally did the flip through. And I'm so grateful and pleased to say that um, a longtime subscriber and um, new friend, because I we finally met in person a month or two ago through the Edmonton Junk Journal group, um, has picked one of the journals that she wants for her for her very own. So of course now I have to chunk that one up a little more. And uh, so, Mo, thank you so much, uh, both for your ongoing support, for hooking me up with the group in the first place, and, of course, for showing your support for my creative endeavor here. We're now in the process of trying to uh, figure out, you know, how and when to rendezvous. Anyway, before we actually begin, I wanted to, to do one more thing with you. A long time ago, in some thrifted purchase, there was, and this is this is not the original. I didn't bother to look for it. This is just a scanned copy. I found Mike's Christmas list, and I thought, okay, we're in the kind of in the season, and I think that you know perhaps if your kids are young enough, maybe they're in the throes of making their Christmas list. Uh, maybe as an adult, you're still making Christmas list. Lord knows I do. That way I get what I want. <laughs> so anyway, I just, I'm going to take a few seconds just to go over this. I, it's not, there's no date on it. Uh, the kid, well, he, he must have been a teenager, I would say. He, there's a little drawing of Santa. Uh, I don't know. That's sort of cut off there. So, and see if you can carbon date this yourself. Number one, tapes, including Daryl Hall, Billy Joel, Stand By Me Soundtrack, Doctor and the Medics, the new one, includes Spirit in the Sky. Buddy Holly and the, and the I, I don't know what that is, Greatest Hits. And I have to say, I would have enjoyed mothering a kid like this because he's so specific. And, I mean, it gets better. Okay, piano music. Phil Collins, Separate Lives. Greatest Hits, Big Book, Lots of Songs, Exclamation, Howard Jones, No One Is to Blame, Mr. Mister, Broken Wings, Chicago, You're the Inspiration, and Hard Habit to Break, St. Elmo's Fire, Love Theme, David Foster, uh, 
Like the guy has a pretty eclectic taste here, I'd say. Lionel Richie, hello. Hollywood Sweet, what does it take? In all caps, any other good ones. <clears throat> and then three, a ghetto blaster. Long shot, probably. Okay, who besides Mike and I even say the words ghetto blaster anymore? That, I mean, I, I can't, I'm not as good as Carol at identifying decades and what was hot when or whatever, but I'm sure some of you will. Okay, books. It, Stephen King, The Far Side, Annie album. And, you know, of course, I maybe you can't see, but there are a lot of exclamation marks as well. <coughs> Sorry for that. I think I'm getting a head cold. And yet, no, YouTube, I'm not dispensing medical advice, but I find that the Kirkland cold and sinus tablets seem to kind of help with that. Okay, number five, swatch. Egyptian or any nice one. Not Comet. New style, preferably. <laughs> Love this kid. Okay, six, clothes. Two, I don't know what that is, but button downs. Two pairs of dress pants. One black with color specs. So I guess he kind of means a Tweety type thing. And one your choice. <laughs> Argyle socks. So not only does the kid have eclectic music taste, he clearly reads because he wants books as well, but he has a fashion sense. Um, I don't know. That might say duck, puck, I don't know. Some kind of a t-shirt in large, exclamation mark. Um, a swatch t-shirt or sweatshirt. One pair faded jeans. Not light blue, in just faded. And I don't know what that is. That's cut off there, too. That's the problem with scanning. Okay, we're getting to the end. A white tank top, a sport coat, sort of like Jen's um, yacht club jacket, sweaters, duckwear t shirts like Chris and Paul's. And then Merry Christmas. Oh, so I guess he wants, after all that, <laughs> all those tangibles, all that consumerism, he also wants a Merry Christmas. So he wants a Christmas tree. He wants a family. He wants food. And he wants et cetera, et cetera. And he says, I'm not expecting all this, but I love you anyway. So I couldn't give a asterisk exclamation point. And only <laughs> on a second reading did I see that down here, he says, damn. So I couldn't give a damn, exclamation mark. I thought this was just so um, <laughs> sweet on so many levels. So I hope you enjoyed seeing that. And I hope you got some tips. If you're making your own Christmas list, be detailed because otherwise you could be disappointed. Use a lot of punctuation. Um, maybe give the gift giver the odd bit of leeway, like your choice. And frankly, don't give a damn as to whether or not uh, you get everything you wanted. Okay, I think we're finally ready to begin. Uh, just have a bit of a cheat list here beside. Okay, we covered everything. So I just, and hopefully, you know, you were looking at that as I was talking. Um, these, I just, okay, let me back up. I scored <clears throat> many, many, many copies of Victoria Magazine. And as you can see, they are immaculate. Uh, these, this, I grabbed these off the 1996 pile. I don't know if I have an entire year that's intact. Now, this October and, and September, or eight, October 88, September 89, were ones that I had kind of put off to myself, for myself. I love this woman, and I don't know that I will tackle this one today. I think I'll work on this one for deconstruction. But I just wanted to show you a couple of more. Um, and again, these are all from 1996. So I do have a variety of years. I was also somewhat pleased to learn 
um, as I was researching this, that they do, they are still being published. I know that they were, I don't know when I first started buying them off the rack. Um, but we must not have had very much disposable income because I thought that they were kind of a bit rich for me. Now, um, I will say that in my research, I've done all the photography. So the, the, the Victoria magazines will be showing up on one of my sales platforms. Maybe I'll have enough that I could spread them around. Coffee, Maker's Market, Etsy. In my research, I have seen them priced as high as $27 and a copy. Um, now, that was in the UK, I believe. So, you know, maybe that explains that. But um, they really do vary in price. And um, I think that's just because people see the value in them. Okay. So this is maybe not one of the most attractive covers ever. But, <clears throat> okay, so what I would do first of all, and I do have assembled a few tools here. So I have a, a steel straight edge ruler. Um, my knife and a pair of scissors. Now, typically, I when I'm tackling any kind of a magazine like like this, whether it's you know from the 1940s or you know something that came in the mail last week, I um, I kind of do a rough cut first. So, and sometimes the best bet is just to remove the covers. Now, this cover is no thicker than. Um, the rest of the pages. So um, if if it was a publication that had a thicker cover, I would put those off to the side knowing that they will probably be used in a different way. So is this the best way to do this? Is this the only way to skin a cat? No, I don't think so. It's just my way. And honestly, um, I hope that with every video you watch of mine, and well, at any, anybody's, is that you take everything you hear and see with a grain of salt, because um, it's just one woman's, one person's opinion, and you are encouraged to um, figure things out for yourselves. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just begin by taking it apart. Now, if I see, um, no, oh, that's gonna be tough. Well, maybe not in this case. I typically will make uh, a rush, uh, a quick, 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 quick decision right in the moment as to which side I prefer, because of course you can't have it both ways most of the time. So I like this and this better than this. So I'm gonna put that face up. Same thing with this back cover. Do I care about Grand Marnier and this kind of weird ad? No, I don't. But wouldn't she be lovely fuss and so easy to fussy cut um, for an art journal or as a, you know, just as a cut her down, make her a little narrower. Um, and of course, the this uh, lipstick and so on to uh, and nail polish to uh, to fuzzy cut as well. So let me move this pile of magazines, and maybe I can I'll start a fuzzy cut pile as well off to the side here. Um, now one of the things that I am less vigilant about doing, and it kind of um, disappoints me <laughs> that I that I don't do it more, is um, at the same time, trying to grab headlines or words that I know I can use. So for instance, so this must be, yeah, this is part of this ad, demi jour, um, perfume, but this little thing here, I would obviously save. A twilight place where dreams and fulfillment meet, a fragrance of heart-stopping beauty. So that is that I think I should commit to you right now that I should do a video. Oh, I said I was going to do a fussy cut pile. Uh, that I should commit to you to doing a video on how to um, 
organize and support the words, the headlines, the, the different kinds of fonts that I have. Okay, this is going to be harder because I like that imagery. And of course, now is it? Oh, that is Audrey Hepburn. Hmm. But yet yeah, these are pretty cool too. <sighs> what to do, what to do. Sometimes I try to have my cake and eat it too. So I would hold a page up to the light. So if I sacrifice this perfume bottle, I could get her, you know, I don't want to cut her off right at the neck there, but let's see. Do a little tiny crease here. Okay, well, you know, that would give her a neck, so that would be good. And then vertically... I might have to sacrifice the top of that um, nail polish bottle, but the others would be fine. But what do I lose here? Oh, see, I don't care about her hand and her chest, so I could have this. So, you know, in a case like that, maybe I should just do a little tear there and a little tear there as a reminder what my intention was. Okay. Keep going. There's, there she is again. If I'd have looked ahead, I would have not worried so much. Let's just see. I might be able to save that uh, perfume bottle. And I can use this Audrey. Because, okay, I mean, this masthead here for the magazine is pretty, pretty. And especially, you know, with the date and the font and so on. But... Six of one, half dozen of the other. I don't know. It looks like there are going to be a fair number of these ads. I would uh, fussy cut that perfume bottle. Uh, let it release the splendor of you. That would be a good thing to do too. Let's just... And sometimes it's better if you can. So what I would do in a case like this is just rough cut it. I'm not going to take the time in this process to fussy cut around this, although it would be pretty easy. But even if you weren't here, I wouldn't be doing that. So I'm adding it to my fussy cut pile. And then with this um, line here at the bottom, I would use my tear ruler because quite often um, I would want a torn edge anyway, so let's just do it right off the bat and save a step later. Now, this is pretty close to the bottom of the page, so, you know, it might have to get used that way. I'll start another little pile over here for sentiments. Okay, I don't know that I like that atmosphere. Kind of. On there is our lovely Liz Taylor. So on a, on a page like this, I would be trying to make the decision or delaying the decision on do I like this woman's face? Is it the right size? It, it's rather oversized for most things unless a person would be using it, say, in an art journal. So more than likely, I would keep this page face up and I would probably start another pile that would be strictly... Well, maybe let's just rough cut around Elizabeth here. I don't know. Do you remember how she was known for her uh, beautiful eye color? So I'm adding her to the plus cut pile. And the rest of this will stay intact because these blocks of color, or these columns even, are would make great uh, collage water. And, you know, you to use in a... In a um, what you may call it, a, um, a masterboard. Now, of course, I'm gravitating to this, but yet this is beautiful. This is the sort of stuff. Now, again, if you weren't watching, I'd probably just be tearing it crooked and ruining something, but I'll try to be a little more disciplined with you guys on watch here. So that is obviously something to either... Oh, see, that's another mistake I make. So please don't do that. I would be less careful than I just was and either trim it too close 
or trim it in such a way that I would have difficulty squaring it off. Like I may decide, look at this at some future point and think, well, I don't want to cut around those little rose petals or that corner thing. And that. So then I sort of kick myself and say, well, why didn't you square it off so that you just, you know, neaten up the edges and you've got a piece ready to go. So I'm putting that off to the side. Now, I will save this for collage fodder and I will what am I we saying here passion for the body and soul solitude serenity essential soothing the body um that I find is pretty small I'm not going to worry about that I mean I'm not going to throw it away because you'll probably notice I'm not throwing anything away um, I will hang on to the word passion there for now. These things are just going with the collage water for the time being. Okay, let's try to speed this up. Nothing particularly attractive here unless you like 80s hairdos. On this side, though, we have maybe some more possibilities. So... Uh, okay, what is this saying about monarchs? Most women, blah, blah, blah. So, oh. Okay, so it's saying that these hundreds of thousands of these monarchs fly from their summer homes in Western Canada. That's where I am. To winter in San Juan Capistrano. The return reaches its peak on Sunday, October 9th, and welcome back, Monarch Day. Oh, and it talks about admission to see that. Um, okay, so I probably would not use that messaging, so I'm just now going to, again, try to be as accurate and square as I can. Autumn, a time for some, even simple pleasures. Okay, that might be a sentiment worth keeping, so I'll try to be cognizant of that. Maybe I should use this ruler instead. Put the butterfly off to the side. Now here it's getting to be a tight squeeze. Now, okay, what I will... First of all, let me kind of... somewhat neatly... Cut around this. That's a picture of Jane Austen, apparently, for fussy cutting. Save the word, um, well, all three words, I guess. Again, trying to be, whoops, somewhat straight, because quite often there is no, there isn't much room for error sometimes with text. Tear off the surplus, add that to the sentiments, save this little bit here, this sort of an ode to autumn. Put that with the sentiments. Uh, covered bridges are not a thing around here. Oh, do I want the lady or do I want the. I'd say prop. Well,. Let's make it a little bigger so that I can maybe change my mind if I want to. So at this point, I have enough surplus around, well, not much around there, but I can make a decision. Um, again, I guess if I was a little, if I was being true to myself, I'm going to throw this out. So there, how's that for a bold, decisive decision? Okay, this is the first food we have encountered. Uh, what the heck is that? Or no, <laughs> that's not, well, that's food. This is potpourri. Now, this is a lovely image with the stacked books, the, uh, the apples. Uh, and then this is really cool, this... Um, business logo is cute I don't like the look of that there's that 
There's an old fashioned room. Now this one may be hard. So maybe I will keep this page intact and see how the spirit moves me when the time comes. Um, one of the things, because of course, when this, when these magazines were, when I was first familiar with these magazines, it was still in the day when, you know, if you were anyone, you had a business card. And they always did a, a, a department called calling cards, and some of them were just little works of art. So here you can see that they have uh, featured four different um, business cards. But what do we have here? A girl with two, a girl with a book. See, tough choices. Hmm. I would have to say maybe, okay, let's do it this way. There's a lot of flipping back and forth. Did you notice? And if I can crop something um, to save something on the other side, I will always do that. Okay, so obviously a card and a half have been sacrificed. But that, I think I'm more likely to use that image. Now, of course, when the time comes, more than likely, I would crop this off right sort of at the end of her hair there. Okay, so what do we do now? Do I need two pictures of the same girl, you know, and especially this one, she's not even reading. She's looking off in the distance. Um, okay, I can easily save good morning because there's just that, there's nothing there on the other side to salvage. And I think that I would then hack away at this. and add this to my fussy cutting pile because I think there are possibilities there. Okay, so, oh, here's another lady with a stack of books. And I think that's sort of what appealed to me. These women were obviously beautiful and well-dressed and they usually had a book in hand. So this is one of those where I wouldn't make the decision until the time comes. Now, here's a woman with a pocket watch, so I'd probably choose that one, but, and even this is beautiful, some sort of a bowl with a statuary in the middle and potpourri all around. This potpourri was big back in the day. Okay. What have we got here? Um, a fake schoolroom. So... I think I would keep this page intact and sacrifice that, which is not so great. Um, oh, I guess this department is called Children's Corner. So they're featuring children's clothing. and So yes, I would keep those two pages intact. That's going to be easy to decide here. I don't want half a car. So on a page like this where everything is either easy to fussy cut or, you know, already boxed off, I would add this to the fussy cutting pile intact. And of course, once a person has done all the fussy cutting, then it's a matter of using whatever system you have in place for figuring out um, what goes where. So, does a person have, you know, a schoolhouse project in mind? Does a person have a Victorian um, a project in mind? Do you keep your people separate? Are you into cats? Are you into interiors and home decor? And that would determine where to keep those things. I remember when I first started watching videos and everybody was talking about ephemera holders, ephemera holders, ephemera holders. And I thought to myself, well, <laughs> clearly I need an ephemera holder. So I made some of those projects. And I have to say, I've abandoned most of those projects. Number one, because I have more stuff than I can accommodate in any one of those systems. Um, 
I've tried different, I've tried boxes, I've tried little drawers, I've tried, uh, do I have one to show? Well, you know, different, um, I mean, there are these sorts of envelopes. Um, they're pretty good, you can label them. I have a number of these, but I'm also kind of annoyed by this flap. Like I would never uh, snap it shut unless I was taking it somewhere. So most of the time, I hack away at these two edges so that I can tuck that flap in smoothly for easy access. Um, I've since largely switched to things like this. Now, this is an odd shape that I bought. Oh, look, there's something in there. I didn't empty. A piece of trim. Guess where this, which project that came from. Anyway, um, I obviously have them in bigger sizes that would accommodate a whole page. These happen to be at a really attractive price, so I bought a few at that point from an art store in Edmonton. Um, anyway, so figure, I mean, you probably figured that out for yourself or um, are in the process of beating your head against a wall like I am. Um, I prefer this page, I think. And if I can salvage that sentiment, I would, but I'm going to leave that face up for the time being. Now, do I, will I ever need um, a, some plumbing? or faucets no so easy breezy pick this side and again now that I've committed to tearing this magazine apart I will maybe who knows maybe I'll even use that pouch um pile this all up together and you know take it and fussy cut in bed one one evening because you know you can sort of multitask in that way yeah, the, those are all good. Okay, pluck, 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 pluck. Oh, plucking gray hairs. We don't want anything there. So, again, this is beautiful. I would isolate that image and cut it out. And here are these beautiful over enlarged beads. These other um, powders or whatever would be... Uh, yeah, those are eyeshadows, I guess what could go into the collage fodder pile. So I'm not going to turn this into three pieces right now, but that would be, oh, here's it. I should, I should get into the habit of looking at both spreads. So um, obviously more big beads here to fussy cut, unless this side is better. <sighs> I would cut her out. I would save that. I mean, even if a corner is missing, it could be used in a master board. It could be covered with something else. So, yeah, I'm going to leave those two pages intact. Easy to avoid that page. And again, the imagery. I don't know. This just It just makes me happy when I see these kind of still life um, vignettes that they have put together and... and um, uh, you know, for to photograph. Oh, more tubes of lipstick. Oh, look, Sybil Shepherd. Um, she would have worked in my blush journal. Uh, it's a toss-up here. Let me just hold that up to the light. Yeah, I think I'm going to... Or maybe it's better if I sort of cut it out as close as I can. So what I'm doing is, again, seems like I have a thing for lipstick, eh? Okay, and, mo and her chin is still good, so I'd almost maybe put her... Sometimes it's almost better to use people we don't know than movie stars. But, so fussy cut pile... Mm, so nothing there. Here I would um, 
This might be great in an art journal, so I'm going to add this whole page, including that bottle, to the fussy cut pile. Okay. Oh, this was about the time we were all making paper. When we had our shop, we would uh, we were we had those uh, terracotta molds that a person could use to. Uh, and I think the kit the kit came with. Um, the pulp that you just sort of had to reactivate and so that is gorgeous but okay no this is a little bit weirder I mean obviously the ferns are okay but do I care about those guys there no I don't so this is the side that I would use um Okay, so sometimes, and I don't know why I do it necessarily, but in this case, I'm going to, as straight as I can, just fussy tear, or I mean rip that. So I have this, and I have, I'd probably use the fern side rather than the text. Okay, so they were talking about ferns, and that's why they included that. Uh, another beautiful vignette, a chair to fussy cut. Um, let's see. If I fussy cut the chair. Oh, I still have part of the bird cage, so let's get this out of here. Those spindly little legs are not the easiest thing in the world to cut out. So what I would do, especially if I'm not using it immediately, is I would cut, 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 cut. And then here I would just make a beeline from that point to that point, from that point to that point. I would leave all of this negative space here intact until I'm ready to actually use it because the odds of crinkling or tearing one of those skinny little legs are pretty darn good. Um, <clears throat> well, I've already hacked away at some of that. So, no, I guess in this case, let's cut a straight line. Allegedly. So this just needs three more sides cut and it's ready to use. Oh, but if I like this side better. Anyway, I don't know. I would decide at the last moment. Um, I think I prefer that side. I should check the time because surely we're not going to get through this whole magazine. We're already at 42 minutes. Maybe I should start, do something from the back. Um, learning to love reading. So again, this is an opportunity. Oh, look at all those book, those vintage book covers or books, period, and those stacks there. So a person could decide. Um, again, there's fussy cutting possibilities here. Or a person could always use something like this. Turn these two edges uh, towards each other, glue them, and have a reinforced belly band or almost like a tall, skinny journaling card. Why are we not folding here? Um, to use just as is. However, there are some gorgeous ads here because, of course, these are Victorian type ads as well. The padded picture frames, the ornate hat. So, I don't know, another six of one, half a dozen of the other. Um, so, I think that I, and look how many pages of ads. Holy cow. Um, this, if you like using these postcard type things or these order forms, this could be ephemera tucked into uh, a pocket. It does mention the year there, so, you know, we know that it's older. Um, I will put that with the full page things, and I'll keep tearing. Look at, look at all those ads. Oh, my goodness. Okay. 
So I have one, two, three, four double-sided pages of ads. So again, I would tackle this, you know, one by one. That seems um, lovely. And of course, here we're also seeing a variety of fonts and layouts, like, you know, gingerbread type uh, trim on houses. Here's a tiny little lady that could be fuzzy cut or fuzzy torn around another little lady there. So maybe I'll make a pile, another pile out of sight here for ads. Now, here we're in, we come to a different point because now you would think that four double sided pages of ads would give a person more than they could possibly use. However, that bride is pretty darn special. So in this case, cutting from the top, okay, I try to keep that word bride and even the word doll intact. And I would just, I guess I could have cut it. Well, maybe I should save some effort, save a wrist. Again, because I I bought that uh, smaller guillotine cutter that you've seen me use, um, it is a lot easier on one's hands than, so I lose that, but big, big hairy deal, as we used to say back in the day. Um, that bouquet is lovely. Now, I would never dream of fussy cutting around those pearls or that ribbon, so I'm going to cut really close to this, isolate this little thing, Add it to the fussy cutting. And voila, I still have bits of ads. So I'll add these pieces to my ad pile. Of course, there is the rest of that girl. And these are just like classifieds. So um, obviously this page will be kept intact. And because I, um, I was able to pull this apart carefully, I, you know, I could just um, at some point cut off that raw edge if, if uh, necessary. Wouldn't she be beautiful either as a side tuck uh, or as a signature page in a tall skinny? You know, it's, it's just, it's gorgeous. And look at, for people who love house plans, I think this was a regular feature as well. So this will stay intact because... Um, Obviously, this could be cut out as, you know, with the um, illustration and the floor plans. So that'll stay whole. Here we see that you could order more house plans. Um, again, I, you know, I'm not going to make you want, I'm not going to continue. See, this is how unfinished projects start. Start something on a video and then... Anyway, I'm not complaining. Um, oh my God, look at those curtains or draperies. But if a person was doing a, a kind of a Victorian kind of room, you might want to, you know, cut that off there because isn't that quite lovely and it's on itself. Did you just hear my shoulder crack? <laughs> Here's a recipe if you're inclined to save that. Um... Anyway, I'm not going to do any more with you, but let's just finish flipping through this and see what the possibilities may be. So here's another um, order form. So we'll add that to that. So again, these things could, in, in the, on their own, be... Um, I might as well tear them off as I'm, I'll have to make the decisions after the video ends. But these, how wide are they? Two and a quarter by four and three eighths. So those would make great journaling cards. And of course, look at that lovely border all around. So I would tear around these parts 
This I would probably cut straight. That I would cut straight. Um, again, using the paper cutter wherever possible to save ones. Oh my goodness. Okay, so clearly I will add these to the... This is called Victoria's Market. I will add these to the other ads. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Um, oh, there's a watercolor leaves. Okay. Celia Thaxter. That name brought something new to I have some of her books. Um, yeah, a watercolorist with uh, a floral theme in mind. Okay, I thought I was going to rip these off as I go. Oh, <laughs> that's the disadvantage from um, reading a book from, from the wrong end. An island. I bet you I have this book. So I would keep all these pages intact because, of course, there is a theme going there. Okay. Do I want an image of a, uh, well, that's a teacup, but I guess it is coffee. Okay, so here's a letter. There's a bit of, you know, dried rose and, and uh, baby's breath. A page off, or two pages off recipes. Sandy needs that tall ship because you can never have too many ships. If you're collecting ships. Um, okay, so some food pages. Mm, I don't know if I'm that thrilled with these, but I said I'd take the magazine apart. You know, there's a cute little, that could be a focal point. That, you know, that plate would be easy to fuzzy cut. This corner would be great collage fodder. Particularly if, like me, you have... Um, Colors be the basis of what you mostly do. Now, if you saw the book haul that I did recently, you'll know that I had a whole book on these sorts of Victorian houses. So I don't know that I need that, but we'll see. Um, wouldn't this make a great envelope? This is rather dark for my liking, but let's see what's on the other side. Yeah, I would choose this brighter page. This is more like it. I just tore that wreath in half, but that's fine. Because, try to picture that section. Sorry, let me just line this up so you don't have all the distraction. So, a person could use that bit there to decorate a page. Or you could go the other way and use this sort of quarter circle of a wreath. That could be a pocket. You could you could back it and fussy cut around those few items. That would be easy peasy. Um, and again, if you like the, those individual um, boxed images, of course. And look at this. Okay, let's maybe go back to the beginning. It would be easy to fussy cut these two plates. Or if you love green, like my buddy Kim does, you know, you might keep that intact. This is another one of those vignette type things that I think would be beautiful on their own. Um, obviously, that could be an envelope. Or collage fodder, if you were doing, if you wanted a green basis to thing, to to the thing you're doing. Now this, see how this is sort of atmospheric type photography. <laughs> Watch your step. That's cool. That could be a wide pocket or a side tuck. I guess it can't be a pocket. Um, because it's too wide, but yeah, side tuck, watch your step. 
but what do we lose on this side? Well, this isn't so great. I would use that side. Um, some people to fussy cut. Another lovely lady. Here's some kids all dolled up with lace and bows. Oh, and here's the woman from the cover. Look at this with that luggage and that swing coat. Yeah, I would fussy cut. Oh, what I'd. Yeah, I'd, I'd uh, isolate those two people, forget her. Fussy cut around this, it's not so bad. And then I still have this image up here with the train and the. Oh, purple coat. Ugh, kind of ugly style, but. Oh, portraits of home. Look at these. This is an illust. Oh, my goodness. See, I didn't flip through this ahead of time. But look at. Time was point of view. So, looks. Okay, they're featuring this artist, whoever she is. Uh, because, can you imagine having painted that? Oh, my goodness. Every board of siding, every little fish scale shingle, the uh, cupolas and the porticos and the filig. Oh, my goodness. Unbelievable. Okay. So, I guess they're featuring this house here. So, again similar if a person wanted to do something on columns or windows um, lots of choices there here's the setting on who doesn't love stargazer lilies um yeah i don't know about that this is beautiful because i love those colors oh sewing notions Man, without even knowing it, I sure picked a good issue. But I think they're they're comparable. Okay, in the century past, a women's workbox often held her dearest possessions. A trove of treasures to rival. Okay, English is my first language. In the century past, a woman's workbox often held her dearest possessions. A trove of treasures to rival her most beloved objects. Here she tucked her favorite sewing tools, each with a task to perform, each with a story to tell or a memory to share. Assembled over a lifetime and used every day, these tools were as familiar to her as old friends. Some were cherished heirlooms, others were gifts from friends and loved ones or souvenirs from faraway places. Such treasures still remain joys to use and delights to behold. Now, that is poetic enough that that could be used or kept intact here so that it um so it isn't lost so we've got a tape measure and stork scissors and uh i wonder i don't know what that is that's some oh is that to make a pom-pom pin cushion pin cushion big needle needle case Um, spools of thread. Yeah, these are just really cool items. It looks like a lot of different styles of pincushion. Look at that one. I don't know. Can you see? It's this, it looks like a burgundy velvet shoe. That is gorgeous. Not sure what that is, but it almost looks like. I don't know. I shouldn't guess. I'll embarrass myself. <laughs> a little pig holding this tape measure. Okay, but here we have... Those are more pin cushions. Oh, my goodness. A little classier than our classic tomatoes, right? slightly oh I have to keep those pages intact too okay now this girl 
She's got a pin cushion on her wrist. She's obviously, well, she's faking it, but she's, we're pretending that she's, or maybe she's sewing beads on there. She's got a thimble on her finger. Of course, she's wearing her finest dress to do all this. Old porcelain head doll. Oh my goodness, these are so beautiful. A sewing basket. The dressmaker's shop, a rarity today, was a favorite haunt of fashionable Victorians. Look at that thread holder. Oh, there's a tomato. So the tomato made the cut too. Oh, I would kill for something like that. In beautiful old wood, not plastic <laughs> or acrylic. Uh, look at these velvet dresses and these fancy collars. Another type of sewing basket. A little tiny vintage miniature metal sewing machine. I've seen similar kinds of things at antique shows. And, oh my goodness, they're expensive. I, I never showed you the... Um, the miniature sewing machine I did buy. I should bring that in and show it in a thrift haul. That's another thing that you guys said. Sorry for this shaking, but I can't resist pulling all this glue stuff off. Um, that's another thing you guys said, that favorite videos are quite often the book and thrift hauls. What if I told you that I was going to stop thrifting? Would you leave me forever? Oh, look at all the cute thimbles. And some vintage lace and a lady sewing. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and here's a watercolor. Shopping for antiques. Okay, so this person... She's referring to a decade ago, so that would have been in the 70s. A friend talked her into going to an antique shop on New York's east side. So again, great collage fodder or use it as a signature page in a tall skinny. Cover this part, the text up with something a little more attractive and you're in business. Shopping for antiques, that too, if I recall correctly, was a regular feature. And I won't gush on because I think we're, I'm preaching to the converted here. Another gorgeous page. Another gorgeous page. Although I prefer this side. Okay, and then this is the last page, and then we're back to that couple. This is kind of a bit yellow for my taste, but that doesn't mean that one, you know, isolated, that these might not be. I think these would still be fine. Would still be fine. Be true in heart. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop there. Um, I know this video was a bit longish, but I hope that you enjoyed this, um, this feature on Victoria Magazines. And I hope that if you're new to harvesting, well, number one, thank you, the Lord that you're not farmers. <laughs> if, if you're doing the, the fun harvesting, um, then you've picked up some ideas. Maybe you've picked up an option or two as to how you might approach a magazine. And of course, I'm not saying that you need Victoria Magazine, but if this, if this imagery appeals to you, <clears throat> appeals to you, then uh, watch for those listings. But the same strategy would apply regardless of whether you're doing Country Guide. Uh, a cooking magazine, <clears throat> a hunting and fishing magazine, like the approach um, is is always the same. So um, I hope you enjoyed the Christmas list. And um, boy, my collage fodder pile is not that big at this point. However, 
um, we know that as the fussy cutting and so on continues, there will be additional elements added to that. So anyway, guys, I will uh, stop here. I thank you for your attention. And um, anyway, go work on those Christmas lists. Um, thank you. Bye-bye.